All right, if you're one of those students that hates completing the square, going through the whole process, you get confused, you make mistakes, and you just so want something fast and easy to follow, well, that's exactly what I'm gonna go through in this video. However, disclaimer, if you don't understand completing the square, you're really bad at it, then by just following these tips, you're probably gonna make some mistakes, you're probably gonna forget them, so make sure you understand how to complete the square first before you try to apply this fast and easy method. Okay, so we use completing the square for a couple different reasons to either rewrite a quadratic from standard to vertex form or to go ahead and solve. But when we're using this fast and easy method, I'm gonna keep everything over to one side. We know that completing the square takes a quadratic from standard form and rewrites it into vertex form. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna go and have my parentheses with my x because I know I'm going to create a binomial squared. Whatever my sign is in front of my linear term, I'm going to preserve that sign. All right, so always go ahead and preserve the sign from your standard form to your vertex form. Then we're just gonna take the value of b and divide it by two. So four divided by two is just going to be a two. Now we have identified what our binomial squared is going to be. Then we're always going to subtract our b divided by two squared. So four divided by two is two. Two squared is going to be a four, and then you can add a one. Now, the last thing we need to do is just go ahead and combine those terms, which is going to be a negative three. Now, I know what you might be thinking, Mr. McLogan, that's not that bad of a completing the square problem. What about when we have a number in front of our x squared? Like, that's gonna muddle everything up, right? Well, not really so much. Okay, so again, if you remember I'm completing the square, we can only complete the square when our a is going to be equal to one, right? So what we do wanna do is make sure on these first two terms, we factor out that value two first. Okay. So now we have exactly our identified our correct B. And that's what's really, really important about this. When you're doing this, you know, B putting into the vertex form or your B divided by two squared, you gotta make sure you're dealing with the right B. And that right B is when you your A is one. So you gotta make sure you factor out a term, whatever you need to do, so therefore your A is going to be one. Now it's really important though, this two was not over here, right? So it's gonna come up again when we go into rewriting this into our vertex form. Now, when just looking at this, we know that we can, again, create our binomial squared and we're gonna have a 2 though in front because that was factored out so now preserve the sign and then 2 divided by 2 is just simply going to be a 1 now we got it okay so it's really really important though that this 2 is now not only going to show up here but we also have to make sure we and we put it over here so we always subtract right our term but now we're gonna subtract our term and we're gonna multiply by 2 so whatever term we factor out we have to have to make sure we're gonna multiply by what we factor out and again, how do we identify what we write here? We simply just take our middle term, divide it by two and square it. So two divided by two is one, one squared is going to be a one, and then we still have our C. So now we can just go ahead and simplify everything. So a negative two times two is a negative two, negative two minus one is going to be a negative three. And now ladies and gentlemen, I have gone ahead and completed the square properly, quick, fast, and easy. I hope this helps.